Discussion item and discussion items are, are uh, typically reserved for the board, and so I'll just start with some comments, and then hopefully the board will engage in discussion and provide some direction as to where we need to move. Um, the the title's framework for replacement of the Suffer Middle Schools fields, and obviously the turf fields need to be replaced. And along those lines, we, we had discussed the framework back in June and touched upon it just briefly in July. And uh, the, the report, oops, sorry, Kelly. <laughs> the final report that will go to the board uh, based upon the framework we discussed back in June, we'll cover the health and safety concerns that have I do that or not? <laughs> okay. It'll cover the health and safety concerns that have been raised uh, by the board and by the community and by uh, studies. It will take a look at the synthetic turf analysis, including cost, natural grass analysis, including cost input from presentations by experts if the board so chooses and input from stakeholder feedback. So that's what the end product will look like, but where we are is, um, I'm not sure. The, uh, so we don't have the, the, the largest part of the screen, but hopefully everybody can see that. The, there's been discussion, and a uh, number of people have, have asked me, parents, some staff members, in terms of kind of like an expert to weigh in on uh, whether you know, we should go with grass fields or with synthetic fields. And the board actually has a policy, 2280, which talks about uh, the selection of qualified consultants. So looking at the December 15th meeting so that we can meet our timeline of getting the report to the board by March 1st, and I'll, I'll explain why March 1st is an important date. Um, for December 15th, I would need some direction from the board or some decisions. Do you want to take a look at expert type testimony, um, pro and con, or just pro or just con, and then within the policy it does talk about duty specified by the Board of Education. You know, what is it you would want, if you so choose, or chose to go with consultants or experts, what is it you want them to address would be spelled out, and then do you want a public presentation or written submission? You know, the, the written submission is valuable, but I think the public presentation to the board would be more valuable in that you can ask questions <coughs> and drill down to, to find out what their positions are. And then secondly there, what other mechanisms for stakeholder and constituent feedback? There are, I've listed two options, there, there are certainly more, but a, a dedicated email and then a survey instrument. The survey instrument, not to um, be too fancy with it, but just to, the, the nice thing about a survey instrument, if we use a Google platform, is if people respond to the survey using Google, we're able to organize the data that we receive from people, and, and it makes it easier to, you know, in a qualitative way, kind of group responses and uh, you know, find out what the common themes or common concerns are. The dedicated email is somewhat similar to 
what we do with board questions during board season. People can submit questions to that dedicated spot. Um, so that's that's one option, doing surveys the other. And, uh, it, it, you know, some people uh, aren't bashful about addressing the board at the podium, but then there are some people that want to be able to address the board in different ways. And, you know, it doesn't have to be limited to the electronic version. People with uh, sending in letters or, or emails, just so that there's a way to collect that information in a systematic way so that people's voices are heard, and then that becomes, you know, the themes will become part of the ending report. But this is, is what I'm hoping, why this, we, we had to have this as a discussion item so that the board can, you know, give me some guidance or, or kick it around tonight and then by the 15th have uh, some decisions made on this because contacting the consultants slash experts and trying to arrange for them to be at the board meeting in January or February, I would need to do that you know, fairly quickly. Um, because, you know, looking at January and February, the January board meeting is about mid-month, but the February board meeting, I believe, is February 2nd. So it's early in the month. So if we're going to have the expert input slash presentations, we need to uh, contact the experts right away. The stakeholder input opportunities, if, if we go to the dedicated email survey or, or, or any other uh, mechanism, then you know we need to be able to collect that information in January, not through the end of February, because the first board meeting in March is March 1st, and that's why the deadline would be March the 1st. We uh, would need to cut it off sometime in February so as to include it in the report. Uh, the research has been uh, ongoing. Uh, probably between 8 and 12 to 14 hours a month going through research and uh, trying to assemble the report. Uh, that will be ongoing during January and February. And then the March 1st deadline, which is what I started with, those five principal areas will be included in the report. And why March 1st is, is kind of a cutoff, the budget vote is on May 19th to have a uh, ballot proposal you need to back up 45 days the first board meeting in april is april 5th 45 days back from may 19th pushes it to april 4th so it's you know we could push the board meeting back to april 4th but getting you the report by march the first you have almost a month if you need to make decisions as to what direction the board wants to go so that the ballot can be properly uh, put together in a timely fashion. But this is uh, really about process and what you all want to do. And it's under discussion, so be uh, very interested to hear what the board has to say. Uh, I'll just start off. I think a public presentation to us, with the public here, would be a great way to go. Just we can ask questions, and I agree. I'm sure you can bring written documentation for us, but I think having them here will be critical to be able to address our concerns and the public's concerns. And I think number of consultants, I think we could sit here, you could you can go on forever with the amount of people that want to get up and talk about this and, and have some knowledge about this, I would guess. <coughs> I would say one for for turf and one for grass, I would guess, would suffice. That's just my personal opinion. I know I could buy far on it. I've always been in favor of turf. I've played on turf, I've coached on turf, but I mean, I'm willing to obviously get one else with an open mind to hear everything at this point. So that's just me personally at this point what I think. So. I'm just I'm processing and thinking, so when, when you say um, one consultant pro turf, pro non-turf or alternative field, I guess you would say, um, you know, so I know that they're also, what kind of consultant is that? You know, so it needs to be, it's very hard to find people that are going to be objective 
you're going to be on one side or the other. Is it <coughs> professional? Is it not as professional? Is it, you know, so there are different ways to look at this. So I'm just processing what we might need to be able to satisfy the public, ourselves, questions that we may have. Um, so I'm just processing. Um, okay, I have a few concerns about the uh, current report that I need to for after attention. So, um, my first concern is um, that we didn't know what we're brainstorming today because this is not posted. So, otherwise, we would have given it some thought in advance. Um, so, I, I would have, I would appreciate it, if, especially on something that critical that we know ahead what items we're going to be addressing. And we've talked about it before. We've talked about it in the presentation. It's not like these numbers that are sometimes in the past um, regarding um, having, having somebody No, but that's, the, that's not the only item we're discussing here. We're discussing some serious decisions that Dr. Adams would like our feedback or our right. opinion on. So I would have had my ideas and thoughts more organized and some responses to you had I seen this then. So that's my first concern. Okay. Um, second, um, in line with what Teresa just mentioned, who qualifies to be the expert that we would invite for um, a presentation is very, very critical, and they cannot have any sort of affiliation with the industry. Obviously, that's a given. Um, there's, I don't see any um, disadvantage to having health professionals because they seem to be the unbiased scientists who will say it as it is, who have no stake or, or no, you know, risk to take financially or, um, you know, in any other way. So I, I would tend to believe a scientist, a physician, and a scientist, a public health expert who is not affiliated with the industry, who has done enough work and has the credentials to back up their opinion. And as far as written or personal testimonials, we received written testimonials that have been read at board uh, event meetings in the past when we were going through the process of making a decision. Um, some of those people who sent those testimonials would be willing to come and talk in front of the board. Um, you know, given that we give them enough notice and can uh, arrange schedule-wise as they're obviously in other engagements all over the country. Uh, it's a hot topic, it's all over the media. Uh, we're not the only district that's battling with this, but we're concerned about our district and our kids, so that's our priority right here. But those people are engaged all over the country, basically, let alone the world. Um, I had heard Dr. Adams in the July meeting where he touched on this topic, mention a community forum, not a board of ed meeting. A community forum might give us a little more flexibility with dates, since our board of ed dates are sort of written in stone and might limit us where that expert speaker that we would love to hear from may not be available. So I'm just putting it back to where, what you had suggested initially in terms of involving a bigger community forum that allows actually people to get up and ask questions a lot more than a board of ed meeting would. I, and I tend to prefer that, where Board of Ed members are present, but the community is also giving, asking questions and giving feedback. Um, uh, selecting the, the expert has to be definitely a very, uh, very, um, very serious and very strict process. We, I think we should all uh, weigh in on who the experts are and, and sort of know who's going to talk to our community. I also have heard uh, Dr. Adams mention that um, members of our administration were visiting the uh, natural turf districts that had had a good experience with that, uh, namely in Long Island, uh, East Meadow, and a couple of others actually that I've learned about since. I don't know if that took place. I'd love to, uh, you know, and uh, a little update on that, please. Um, you know, when when putting together a report, I'd love to see what the sources were for the information. Uh, you know, as I. When I do something medical, I like to see what the source was. It's very important where we get our information from. Um, and Amani, if I can just touch on that, we're, we're going to try to set up the uh, report where uh, there'll be links within the document so that you can go right to the, the source information. Um, 
I believe that we can do that. So people, and then there'll be the bibliography that they can just open it up. For right, but bibliography. you're talking about putting that together and submitting it to the board. I mean, do we have a chance to work on it? To, you know, to, to I just want to make sure all points of view are represented, sure. and sure. that you know other resources that we have, you know, been able to access since the conversation started are not neglected or ignored. I feel that's very important that we, you know, we show all aspects of this Absolutely. situation because it's a major decision that affects the health of our children that we are concerned about. Um, even if we are weighing synthetic and natural, there's a variety of synthetics, there's a variety of chemicals in them. We need the experts who can actually break that down in layman terms so that our community is well educated about business making an educated decision. You know, I, I know time is of essence. We're back to battling with um, you know vote time in May, but it seems like I don't know how much progress we've made since last May. You know, it seems like we, we kind of stalled. Um, so I, I don't want to see this rushed at this point in spite of everything. Um, so that's another concern. It's not a process to be rushed. It's definitely a process to be very extremely thorough and extremely dedicated to, I feel, um, you know, collecting information from all sources is very important. Uh, hearing everyone's opinion, as you mentioned, is, is critical. Uh, it's not just about athletic performance. I'm a big, you know, uh, advocate of sports in our district, as you know, as you know very well, through my personal experience with my children. Uh, but health comes first before athletic performance, and I don't think anybody would disagree to that. Um, as far as getting feedback from the community, um, I don't see a problem with obtaining feedback in all ways, encouraging people to do everything, uh, as opposed to choosing. Uh, but I think the community forum um, is, is more significant than a board of ed presentation at this point. Thanks. All right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's kind of like a debate cake, okay, and you take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that. I, I, you know, I think one of the advantages sitting down in here is kind of the Depends on which end it starts, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I certainly, I, and, and I think that this is healthy, uh, but I just want to make sure that the board is all in agreement that we do want to put this on the budget vote so that, I mean, if we've got some people that don't feel that they want to do that, let's talk about that because that's got to be a definitive. I mean, we don't want to get involved in this and then realize that, oh, we want to do the clock or something. You know, I think that this is kind of dragged on enough and that we've got to you know, be safe for health, well-being, and for this athletic program itself, we've got enough. Now, having said that, as long as we <coughs> agree with that, um, I think that we do have to, have to vet this very well. I mean, not only is it a health and safety issue, it's also a major expense. Um, and it's an investment in the district itself. So we've got to, you know, here's an opportunity for us to do it right with the information that we have. You know, I certainly think, and I've always been a big proponent of hearing what the community has to say. So whatever forum we choose, I'm certainly in favor of that. Um, I agree with Dr. Adams that there are people that also feel reluctant about coming to a public meeting, coming to a public meeting that may have valuable insight and that they can share that um, in an email or do some type survey of a survey. That's fine. Mm -hmm. that, that is the case as well. Um, and I think it's important for the board to sit and listen to experts on all sides. Just going back, our, you know, I, I want to make it clear to our community, are we considered <coughs> from rubber or are we consider other synthetic drugs? That needs to be very clear from the start as we go into that conversation. I too would have wished that I would have seen this framework before, so I could have given a little bit more thought. Um, so, but here I am on the spot telling you um, kind of my ideas. Um, so first of all, I think that the concern is health. I mean, we're not having this conversation because we don't like the color of the field. We're having this conversation because we're concerned about the health and safety impact of synthetic turf on our kids. So the number one expert that has to be there and it is a health expert. I think that, that we cannot do without a health expert. And it needs to be somebody who is researched, is independently funded, mm -hmm. um, not somebody whose research is funded by uh, the tire industry, the recycle industry, this and that. So we have to be very careful in that expert which is selected, looking at their credentials, 
Um, but the number one expert that needs to be present is a health expert because we're not having this conversation for really any other reason than what are the long-term health impacts. Um, the second thing that I want to say is the reason why I didn't pass last year is because the community, at least my interpretation of the reason why I didn't pass last year, because the community did not know exactly what they were voting on. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of ambiguity. So one of the first things that needs to happen in whatever form we, we decide, and I do believe that a community forum is the appropriate way to go, is that questions are answered. So there needs to be a way to have a two-way feedback. So people ask questions and they get answered. And not necessarily by us, but by these experts. So they need to have the opportunity to ask these people that have expertise in this matter their questions, because that's how the community is going to feel more comfortable in knowing what they're voting for and what they're potentially exposing their kids to. The second thing that I want to say is, I see on March 1st here, it says synthetic turf analysis, including cost, is to be done before March 1st. On June 2nd, it said that we were interviewing two firms the week of June 8th, 2015, for testing of existing fields. Did that happen? No. Oh, well, the interviews did. Yes. And what was the result of those interviews? They were interviewed. And we decided not to move forward with testing, because the summer is the best time to test. So if we're going to go testing the fields in the winter, that's not going to yield us the information that we need. What are we talking about? We're talking about testing post that. And we're not testing the fields. That's correct. Right. 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 Because one of the things is, you know, also assessing the safety of the field that's there now. That also needs to come into the conversation. And I don't know that, you know, testing in the winter, you need to test these fields when they temperature the ice, so it needs to happen over the summer. So I'm just, to my understanding, so they were not tested over the summer, because I've never seen any results of that. Okay, so then we have to really, in our analysis, and potentially with the consultant, um, discuss what we're going to gain from testing these in the winter as opposed to in the summer under the conditions where they're willing to be tested. I don't want to take a three minutes, but if we go along the lines of replacing the fields, then we go along the lines of replacing the fields, then we can get wide testing. And that's been a question I asked in the past. What's the value of spending the funds if we're replacing them no matter what? And at this point, we missed the summer. We were going to test, we needed to test them. I think that was it, and it's why it's the right replacement now. Because we know we need to replace it. But why spend the money and do the analysis if we're moving this direction? It's just I'm only bringing it up because it's written here. Right. Needing to be done before March 1st. Yeah. And so I'm questioning that. I don't think right. it's the appropriate time to test it. Um, so I think it is going to be tough to find experts that are not in some way, shape, or form connected with the tire industry. And that's going to be difficult. And we have to really do our due diligence. And um, as far as how to get input from the community, you know, surveys can be designed in one way or designed in another way to get the results that you want to get. So I think that we can do a survey, but we can't rely only on those results. I think we should also have an opportunity for people to A, ask questions, but B, again, really importantly, get answers. Um, let me just make sure there's anything else that I missed here. Um, Oh, the report that we're setting up. So this, this final report that we're going to generate, I'm a little uncomfortable putting my name to something with a report that has medical information on there that has not been um, thoroughly evaluated, approved by a medical professional with expertise in the field. So this is my own personal opinion. I, I don't know that. We have that expertise on this board, regardless of the fact that Amani has, has a degree in public health and I'm a physician, and, and we all, you guys are experts in sports and stuff, um, which I'm not. Um, but I don't know that we have that expertise to, to put such a, an incredible document together. And also legally, does that have implications then for us? I don't know. So I think that I'm not exactly sure what we mean by a report with links and all that sort of thing and, and how that, that would transpire. So those are just some of my off the cut thoughts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to just to clarify, the the page, the second page is a synthetic turf analysis. It, I don't think it wasn't meant analysis of the fields. It was just 
with all the data and information that's been collected. It wasn't the actual testing. Okay, so that doesn't exist. Right. right, right. right. Okay. Analyzing options and the cost. Is that the accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to test it again. Yes. Um, I, I agree with trying to find a health expert in getting us through this, but the other consultants you are going to need them to come from the contractors and the suppliers to sit down and go over what exactly are the choices, what the prices are, what the timeline is. So we're going to need those also within that thing. So for natural term, for the synthetic term, then have somebody, and I know it's going to be hard to find somebody so independent, but to try and find somebody that maybe you can try, attempt to vet well and, and see that they're as independent as I guess you can be to give us the options for both sides. You know, this reason, that reason for the grass and for the turf. Um, as far as the stakeholder feedback, I'd like to see, I think email and survey is good, but I'd like to have that information before the people come to present so that they can have those questions, so that they can build that into their presentation. Um, when they do present, I'd like to have it, the floor open to the public so that they can ask questions as well. We have a lot of very knowledgeable public people out there who have some good questions that I think would be helpful to us. Um, to add to that one, not to interrupt you, but those questions that we might get earlier might direct us to other people that we didn't consider as part of giving us feedback that we have to go to the information from. So, such as longevity of, of natural grass or restrictions or you know things that might come up that we haven't already thought or talked about, but that we can get answers or call somebody else that maybe wasn't on our radar. So I didn't want to interrupt. Them. I, um, just with respect to um, determination of a number of determination of a number of consultants, um, you know, you don't want to dilute the process, and and you know, you hear from one consultant after another after another, you're going to get engaged and so you need to focus it. And, and I think when we're talking about consultants, we're talking about the the, the toxicologist, the medical professional, more so than I mean, we've done research about how much it would cost. We've spoken to the architects, we've spoken with companies, we've spoken, you know, to get all that money, to get all that, you know, those issues resolved with respect to how much it will cost. I think there may have been actually a presentation uh, way back when with respect to the cost of each different type of uh, uh, field. So I think I think the focus on, with respect to this first part was, when we're talking about the number of consultants, it's really talking about the, the professional to say, okay, this is this is my professional opinion on on turf field. This is my professional opinion on term rubber and virgin rubber and natural grass, whatever the case may be. So um, I think that would be more the focus for that first part. Um, you know, we have to hire those, those consultants. These other consultants, you know, well, they're the architect. We don't we don't hire them. He tells us what it's going to cost for him to do it. We with the whoever's going to put the field in, whatever whatever. So we have to use, they will tell us, you know, this is what's going to fuck. There's no higher than So I think at this point, so the policy mentioned is we have to determine the consultants that he will hire to do the presentation. Um, the second thing I think it's important that um, that the uh, we do make sure it's clear and you know, don't that leave with too many. Um, I think one on each side, I don't want to even say each side, just two different opposing views as to you know what, what we can do, should do, shouldn't do. Um, I, I think the I think the public I think the public presentation or written submission. I think it's not you know written submission is great. It's on paper. I think it's better to be presented at board meeting in public. I think if you do the surveys and the dedicated email, I'm not quite sure how well that process would work. You know, with those we can get questions and we can you know we have. Different views amongst the seven of us that pretty much cover the gamut with respect to this issue, I think. Um, and it's, you know, the, the public is well represented in what they put us up here. So um, I think it just becomes more, more focused and not limited in, in that sense. Um, and with respect to the survey or the email, uh, and uh, both, whatever, whatever, whatever. We can do to get the most information. I would like to hear from people who won't get up. There's people who will not get up and talk. 
and say anything about, I, you know, I love chrome rubber, you know, on the field. Um, because they're, for, their, for whatever reason, they won't get up and say it. So, um, I think it's important to hear it through a or through a survey. Uh, what we have to resolve now, you know, for timing purposes is, um, and just the way the procedure works, is to put it on the agenda for next meeting, which is the December 15th, 15th meeting as an action item, um, as this is what we will resolve. And also to give administration at least a heads up as to, okay, which, you know, how do we want to proceed with this? Um, I know there's been a lot of work with respect to um, researching the different issues with respect to whether it's chrome rubber, virgin rubber, coconut husk, uh, or cork, um, and natural grass. Um, so a lot of that work's already been done. A lot of money with respect to that has already been done. Despite Kelly leaving. Um, so I think we need to focus now. Do you know for resolve between? The seven of us, at least by a, somewhat of a majority, let's focus. Do we want two consultants? We can't, we can't, and I'm talking about just the medical consultants, not the consultants for who's going to build the field. Uh, uh, With regards to policy 2280, so do we have to put this out for a bid? Is that what you're saying? So we come up with what are the qualifications that we want to see in, in these experts? And then it goes out for a bid, and then we have no control over who, because we have to take the lowest bid, right? There are health experts that do not charge anything. Yeah, it depends, so it depends on the money. It depends on how much it is. Right. So, so, so we may not have a choice over which consultant we get. Well, we, have, well, we have a choice over the kind of consultant we want. Right, but we may say we want help, or, or we may say we want someone to represent the bad turf, and then here we go, we get, or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, right. Do we have that Let's much control? Now. It, it, if the consultant costs for one person exceeds 35000 then it has to go out for bid. But if it's below that, it does not. Correct. Correct. My, my question is, Dr. Adams, do you already have a health, public health consultant that would or a speaker that you have in mind for this presentation. Because if you don't, I have the contacts lined up. Um, a couple of things, that I'll, I'll address that in just a second, Monty. What I was wondering is, that there were a lot of things shared this evening, and I appreciate that, and I was wondering if by Thursday or Friday of this week, if Angela and I kind of Try to summarize or group this together and send it out to the board and, and refine it a little bit to help us formulate what you want to vote on on December 15th. But just to try to capture what you all are saying as best we can and then you refine it. You send it back and forth. It'd be nice to put a Google Doc and then we can just all edit it uh, dynamically. But. Um, Amani, back to your question, There, I believe early on in the process, somebody came and spoke over at um, the village of Airmont, City Hall, or Village Hall. I don't know if that's the person you have no, in mind, no. but uh, no, I, the I did not of, The head of the Pediatric Public Health Association, the American Academy of Pediatric Public Health, is I, willing to speak to our community. I, I have no experts uh, from the healthcare um, side. I'd be happy to connect with you, him and... If you can give me a call and, and we could Is that okay? set that up. The board, yeah. the board needs to approve that before okay. I do that. Well, I think I think I would, you know provide the information and then if Dr. Adams can even shoot out the resume of whoever we're considering uh -huh. at that point, I think I'm sorry. Well, well, I, I thought go I ahead. heard you all say yeah, well, uh, is that the, it's key to have the qualifications agreed to, and so if the board can agree to the qualifications. And then the name is forwarded, then we can compare the name with the qualifications. Um, so I think it would be critical for you all to decide the qualifications. So I think for a health expert, they need to have training in public health. Um, preferably somebody who has experience in environmental health, um, especially pediatric environmental health. It can be two important qualifications, someone who is very familiar with the issue. So 
familiar with this particular topic because there are environmental scientists, physicians slash public health experts who did not specifically work with turf. Their expertise is maybe cell phone you know, risk or another area right. of environmental exposure. So we need someone who has enough work in that area and will give us an unbiased scientific opinion as to what the exposures are. Yes. Not just exposures to rubber clumps, it's mm -hmm. kind of, I'm like hearing and undermining and feeling that. We're beyond that, I hope, but the other sector feels, how do we compare them? How do we make an educated comparison and find if one of them may be a good option for our children here or if the natural way to go? But to make that distinction, it needs to be someone who's worked with, you know, familiar with all the chemicals and all the different types of children. I just have one question, and I know when you guys have started doing some research, you have done quite a bit kind of outside the field, no pun intended. But one of the things, did, did you include the possibility, and I think it would behoove us, to speak to other districts that have gone through this process now? And are yes. Ready to get ready to okay. Yes, so they yes. would have Yes. So I'm thinking about the possibility of maybe even availing ourselves of the National School Board Association, because obviously mm -hmm. this is just. <laughs> and, and I'm just concerned about getting price change. Um, I mean, comparisons from one supplier. I really, I, I know the supplier is on the state list, which would save time in terms of getting bids. I realize, you know, again, time is of essence. On the other hand, I feel like if it's going to save our district. A, a pronounced amount of money to go with another supplier that might require a different process, but it's well worth it to save tax dollars as well. Sure. So I really, uh, you know, really appeal to our administration to research prices to other providers that may or may not be on the state list. Yes. One of the possible consultants is Ellen Jaffe. She sent us that letter, and she's right on the Legislative Environmental mm -hmm. Committee, and they are actually actively looking at the synthetic turf issue. Um, so she. She might be a resource to give us names. <laughs> but she would certainly give us an interesting viewpoint of what they're thinking. I'd love for the community to hear from those who have had a good experience with natural turf and also, besides the administrators, visiting, what their discussions are with the supplier and how they feel about it. And I'm sure that the community will be able to give us some very good feedback on that. Thank you. 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 Community to have that feedback as well and to be part of that conversation. Ask them the questions what do you use for pesticides? Uh, we're concerned about the chemicals you use to maintain grass. How do you deal uh, rainy day games? I love that to come to us as well. And use the fields too. We're talking about that because, you know, what is within the two years of fields? Correct. But that was my other point. We, have, we do have grass fields that we still use during rainy days. We still use, we're not allowed to use certain, most pesticides. So right. we, we had that, our own experience. We don't necessarily need to run out. And, and but there's been complaints about the quality, the, the condition of our grass fields. It'd be great to get somebody. And we get, we get, we're very restricted on what we can use. Right. We all lost the government that. But, but if, if this had a really good experience with what we were told, NFL quality fields that they were able to contain, let's hear their story as well. And ask them the question. North Rock has a beautiful baseball field, but nobody's allowed to use it. They use it for nine games a year. That's it. Yeah, but that's not the case so in East Meadows. So I'd love like to hear from that if possible. So I just want to go back. I just want to go back to our last up what we're talking about as far as having, let's say, two experts. That's even more important. Dr. Adams, your timeline ties into getting the community feedback first. But it's so important to get that because if those two experts can't answer every question that comes up, we need to be able to funnel those people, maybe people in different districts or other experts, and we need to be able to have those answers because if they're coming up there, even if we have a community forum, whatever way we, we decide to present this, there are going to be those questions and more. So we at least want to get a head start on being able to present as much information as we can. Okay, so let's get let's get some clarity here then. I, with respect to a dedicated email and the survey <coughs> overall, it, it, there needs to be no vote necessarily with respect to that, but we're going to go with doing a bold approach if that's both plus oh, any plus any knowledge. written information. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay, with respect to the um, the consultants consultants, two consultants differing opinions, um, 
I would recommend that, you know, Dr. Adam Forward, Dr. Adam Forward's the curriculum vitae, the resume, whatever the case might be with respect to, you know, who the people are, and he has an understanding of the background that you're looking for, I mean, um, that we're looking for with respect to their expertise. Forward that, and then take a, take a quick look at that as soon as possible, and, um, and proceed from there. So I think... Before that, we we'll kind of we just keep talking about what we want. Let's Are we talking we about a, a board of ed meeting or a community forum? That's important. Um, we, that, that doesn't have to be decided right now. However, I don't believe because we haven't hired anybody yet. Um, dates. I, I think. Matter. <laughs> well, the dates we can we can we can have a board meeting at any date, and we just got to get seven of us together. So, mm -hmm. but during the board meeting, the community can uh, ask questions. Technically. No, but hopefully we'll have some questions from the community when the process is. That's why I would prefer a community forum. Mm -hmm. I'd like it to be open. Yeah, because sometimes uh, you think it's a question, like someone else asked it, and all of a sudden you have to be questioned. So I think there should be plenty of I think we have a range in a way that it's more focused on board meetings. Should we think more? I maybe for uh, where people can ask questions. Or? We're not going to we're not promoting to this discussion. So we'll just discuss it. Let's get some good. information from Dr. Adams and and mm -hmm. we'll between now and the next meeting, hopefully. And um, you know, if we have to put it on the next meeting as an action item and then just have another discussion at that point, we can we can all do that and modify whatever motion's on there. So um I okay with that. The policy does not reference community forum. It says public hearing, and it's uh, 2390. If you want to check that out, public hearing. Public, public hearing allowed interaction. I believe so. It's 2390. Uh, I'll have to double check that. It's, it's, do you want me to read it? No. Do you want me to read the next item? Okay, um, public participation. Anything else? I'm sorry. Um, we will try to. Public hearing here. It says people have three minutes. It's the same thing. They have three minutes to, uh, to, to, to talk. I don't know. I think it needs to be in two minutes. Are we actually a public hearing on board of meeting? That's what I found in the policy manual, but I, I believe that you can suspend the rules to modify that. So it could be a community type of event that's not governed by board of ed policy, correct? It's still it's governed by policy, but you can suspend the policy for that specific exactly. event. But yes. Maybe super. Maybe super.